Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel or welcome for the first time if you're new around here. My name is James aka Widowed and this is your ultimate guide to relics in Leagues 5 Raging Echoes. We're going to be diving on through all eight tiers of relics in this video. We know them all fully now which is absolutely fantastic ahead of the league start. The only thing we don't know is how many points it takes to unlock each tier. The only one we do know for certain is that tier 2 is unlocked at 750 points. The rest are unknown. It appears that tier 4 is unlocked at 2480 from the video that they posted with Solo Mission, but it's not confirmed yet. So maybe tier 3 might be about 1600 is my estimate. That's just conjecture though. Right now all we know is tier 2 is unlocked at 750 points. We do know all the relics though and the passives. I won't be going over the passives in this video like League XP multipliers. If you want to know those, I've got another video on the channel about it when the information got released the other day. Feel free to go check that out. But this is for the actual relics themselves and let's not waste any more time. Let's dive on into the tier ones. I will be going through all of these fully for those who haven't seen any of the updates, they haven't been paying attention to daily reveals or anything, don't worry, I'll be covering it as if you know nothing here. And there will be timestamps if you want to skip around as well, if you're just looking for a specific part or if you, you think you already know what I'm going to say about a specific relic or whatever. Starting off here, in tier one, we have a selection of harvest relics. What I mean by this is each of them gives you a buff to harvesting a specific type of resource. We have the power miner for mining, the lumberjack for woodcutting, and the animal wrangler for fishing. And with each of these, you get given a tool, the echo, pickaxe, axe, or harpoon, that is equivalent to the crystal variant, which means it's very high catch rate. They're really good, and they also have additional chances to succeed in that style when you're using it. So, on the failing to chop a tree, separate 50% chance to succeed. Same is true for failing to mine a rock in Power Miner and failing to fish a spot in Animal Wrangler. What's more, each of these has bonus effects that can be toggled that changes how you treat the material that you're obtaining. The Power Miner can automatically smelt ores into bars regardless of your level in smithing and gives xp for it and gem scavenged can be automatically cut as well which you could use even at gem rocks to auto cut all the gems and they give crafting xp so power miner comes along with some smithing and crafting buffs it also rocks will not deplete until you've mined four ores so you can mine four rune ore in a row sorry four rune bars in a row obviously if you want to from a rock before it depletes. The Lumberjack can get some extra fletching XP or fire making XP out of theirs. They can either burn or fletch the logs into arrow shafts. Either way, you'll be able to get some extra XP out of your logs. There isn't a way to turn them into planks, unfortunately, but you can still get a shit ton of logs to make into planks, obviously, using this relic. And the fishing one will automatically cook all the food for you and that's all it does it cooks the food on that hand of it but instead it also gives you buffs to hunter hunter traps will never fail chinchompers are doubled catch faster and give double xp as well and implant jars no longer break upon opening them and you can never burn food while cooking so, some great options here. One thing that I feel like I didn't actually mention, for all of these, whatever resources you are gathering, they'll be automatically sent to your bank. So no need to worry about running to the bank, your inventory filling up, it's never going to happen. You can AFK with these for up to 25 minutes depending on how long the resource is going to last. 25 minutes being for Karam ones because those spots never move, so you can AFK until the game logs you out. <laughs> Personally, I'm a fan of Animal Wrangler, that's definitely what I'm going to be picking. I like the buffs to Hunter and the fact that I'm going to be able to AFK fish cooked Karam ones. Oh, sorry, 50% chance to be automatically cooked, not a guaranteed, but... 
the ones that get sent to our bank raw even i can't burn them so i'll get around to cooking them eventually and that'll be super fast xp as well the hunter boss are going to be nice but you can't really go wrong with any of these i'd say the lumberjack is probably the weakest one and the power mine is especially nice if you have asgarnia but definitely just pick whichever one you feel like complements your regions the best. If there's a weakness in your regions, you don't think you're going to be able to get good smithing XP, then Power Miner might be fantastic, and so on and so on. Moving on to the Tier 2 Relics, we have our Utility Relics. Each of these buffs one of the less desirable skills to train in the game to make it much, much better. For the Friendly Forager, we have Herb Law buffs. You receive the Forager's Pouch. While in your inventory or equipped, find and store a random grimy herb equal to your level plus 25 and give you a little bit of herb lore XP when you're gathering resources from woodcutting, fishing, mining and hunting. Hit the rock, get a herb. Chop the tree, get a herb. Fish the fish, get a herb. AFK for 25 minutes on Karambwans, getting like 300 cut Karambwans sent to your bank. 300 herbs as well. Not only this, you can like force it to store the herbs to get the herbs you want by making sure that's empty and the other slots in the bag are full with 30 of each of the other herbs so that it will only randomly roll the one that you're missing because it does that. Additionally, you have a 90% chance to not consume secondaries. This is incredible. You could just like have a couple of old arium and make infinite prior regen potions out of them not only that the potions are going to be four doses instead of three i'm looking forward to getting my hands on this one and super early as well there are a ton of tasks in leagues like go chop 50 maple trees and you're like oh okay i guess i'll go chop 50 maple trees and the fact that i could just be getting herbs that entire time whew, that's a big sell corner cutter on the other hand will give you a pair of Sage's Greaves. While equipped, you will get agility experience everywhere, just running around. As long as you keep moving, you'll get agility XP. You could do a follow train in Lumbridge around the fountain and get agility 99 if you want. Go nuts. Not only that, you'll also succeed in all actions for agility. You'll never fail a trap or an obstacle or whatever. Completing a course grants 2 completion count and 25% bonus experience. Marks of Grace will spawn with 10k cash. And you get double the Pyramid Tops, Hallowed Marks, Brimhaven Vouchers and Crystal Shards from the respective courses. So, tons on offer for agility here. You can either make it a skill that you never want to train by just putting the grooves on and training it passively. Or you can go hard on it and get all those extra bonuses from really leading into those courses that you have access to and also getting an exceedingly high lap count on the way which may help towards some tasks that require you to get a hundred laps of a certain course or whatever i don't know how many of those tasks are going to be around this year but historically that has been and then finally we have dodgy deals this one is the thieving relic and it will give you the ability to automatically repick pocket an NPC or stall until you can no longer do so. So until you have the maximum amount of money pouches or your invents full or whatever. You have a 100% success rate as well. You'll never get stopped and punched in the face by a master farmer or a guard or whatever. And pickpocket an NPC will also pickpocket all NPCs of the same type within an 11 by 11 square. Granting loot but not XP for each extra NPC that you pickpocket. So if you've got a clump of guards, you can pickpocket from all of them at the same time, get a shit ton of money really quick. The same for Martin, the Master Gardener, and the Master Gardener that are in Draenor Village, possibly spots in the farming guild where there's two next to each other, I'm not sure. Vyres, elves, tons of stuff you could do with this when you get them grouped up to have some huge gains. And yeah, it automatically keeps going. Oh, and items obtained from pickpocket and are noted, so you don't have to worry about your inventory filling up as often. Unless you're at the ham hideout, because those guys drop everything. Top of that, your maximum coin pouch is increased by three times the normal amount, and stalls will never deplete when you are thieving from them, unless somebody without dodgy deals walks up and takes from the stall to fuck you over. 
Lots to offer here. Again, you can't really go wrong. No relic is ever going to be a bad choice. If I had to say, personally, I think Corner Cutter is the weakest of the three. It just doesn't offer you anything fancy or splashy that the other two do. Being able to AFK Thieving is absolutely huge, and being able to constantly get herbs in the early game when it might be difficult to farm them otherwise, it's going to save a ton of time, especially if you're not picking over Grum later. I think this might be a good point to just go over that. Relics matter in connection with one another as much as they do on their own. Friendly Forager is way less valuable if you pick Overgrown, which comes later down the line, I'll obviously get to it. And vice versa, Overgrown's less powerful if you pick Friendly Forager. That doesn't mean that you can't pick them together, but just keep it in mind when you're choosing your relics, what relics you might be choosing a couple of tiers down the line as well. Okay, on from the tier 2s. We have the tier 3 relics, the teleports this time around. Fairly small category here, 3 to choose from. We have Fairy's Flight, you get the Fairy Mushroom, which allows you to teleport to any Fairy Ring at Spirit Tree or Tool Leprechaun. It auto completes Tree Gnome Village. You can only teleport within your own regions of course, and it ignores Wilderness Teleport Restrictions. The Bank Heist gives you the Banker's Briefcase, which allows you to teleport to any deposit box, bank or bank chest, and it has the same ignoring Wilden's teleport restrictions and can only be used in your regions. The Clue Compass allows you to teleport to any stash unit and to file out the Bard, if he's in your regions. It can also teleport you to your current Clue Step if you have one, but does not work on Clue Steps that require killing a certain NPC, e.g. Killer Hellhound tasks doesn't care about the wilderness, can only be used in your own areas. These are fairly self-explanatory, if there's one that you want to pick, then pick it. Most people are going for Clue Compass, probably myself included. Fairy's Flight is fucking incredible, being able to get to Tool Leprechauns is massive, I know that from last leagues, but Clue Compass does have a lot to offer, you've got the Shiloh Village Bank, you've got the uh, Enchanted Valley that has a fairy ring really close to the clue teleport, so that's a good option to get to a fairy ring quickly for any player. Clue Compass has a lot to offer and it is the optimal choice, but if one of the others feels like appealing to you for whatever reason, go for it. Leagues is about having fun, and that's all that matters. Right, tier 4 is going to be a bit contentious for some people, and it's probably going to be contentious between these top two slots, because I don't think anyone really is going to pick Equilibrium. At least, I would not recommend it. Uh, this is not very good, so we'll start here. Each time the player gains experience, you gain additional XP equal to 10% of the player's total level across all skills in the skill trained. Increase to 20% when training the skill you have the least experience in. Basically, every time you perform an action, you get bonus additional XP. It's not multiplied by the League's XP multiplier, though. There is a way to track in-game how much extra XP you've gotten out of this. It's just kind of a do-nothing relic. It makes you go faster, but going faster isn't really good if you still get to the same cap eventually. It has an expiration date. That's the easiest way of putting it. If your goal is to max your account in Leagues, and you want to pick Equilibrium so that you can max your account faster, you'll max your account, and Equilibrium won't do anything for you anymore. But if your goal is to get 200 mil in all skills, then yeah, you're probably not going to manage that even with Equilibrium. Maybe it's worth taking. I don't know how much of a realistic goal that is, though. In most circumstances, I'm not expecting people to be very interested in this. It's probably going to be the least picked relic of the whole league, maybe of any league ever. So, yeah. It's hard to say yes to Equilibrium when you could be saying yes to Golden God or Reloaded. Now, I guess we'll go over Reloaded next because it's such a simple line of text. Choose any other relic from previous tier. Well, I just went over all the previous relics, so if you want to know about those, go back in the timestamps. This is really cool though, it lets you pick up a second one in an earlier tier. Any of the teleport relics, the harvest relics or the utility relics, you can grab in addition to the ones you already have. 
So you could have the harpoon and the pickaxe together, or you could have thieving and herb law together. Whatever you want. I wouldn't recommend getting an extra teleport one, because you whatever teleport relic you picked is probably going to cover everything you need anyway. But Reloaded definitely has a lot of things to offer. The cost is turning down Golden God, which gives you access to high and low level alchemy off the bat, with no rune cost, no level requirements. And your items give 15% more gold, have a 65% chance to not be consumed, and when it's cast on a stack, it will automatically recast over time until the stack is depleted or moved. This means you can attack an enemy, and then go attack another enemy, and then go and cook some food, and go back into the fight with some more potions, and the entire time, you were alkin. That cash stack is going up, the item stack is going down. And... The item stack's not going down quite as fast, and the cash stack is going up faster than it usually would. This is such a cool effect, it's never something that we've been able to see before in-game. I'm definitely excited by it and looking like I'm probably going to pick it myself. We also gain the following benefits to prayer of 20,000 coins being able to be used as a dragon bone. So that's definitely cool, you know, you can buy your prayer basically because you will have infinite money with this. Go buy some ruby rings from the shop in Zanaris, get a stack as big as you can afford and then start alking them. By the time it is done, you will have tripled your money. And that's not a joke. Literally triples money with a 1k investment per ring. Finally, you can also buy items noted from shops, which is very nice for just spam clicking because shop stocks are infinite in leagues. You can spam it and just buy all the items you want and you'll have all the money to do so with gold and god in your arsenal. Yeah, it's a tough call between these two. I think it, it just comes down to personal preference and reload definitely does give you a lot of things to pick between. But whether those things are more powerful than Golden God is the decision you have to make. Alright, tier 5 was a completely hidden tier. We didn't know any of these until today. I guess we'll call this the Mastery tier, even though for some reason they called the Treasure Arbiter rather than Master like the other two. Kinda weird. These are specialisations that are a little different, so I guess we'll just go over them all separately because they aren't really sharing any effects like many of the other tiers do. For Treasure Arbiter, you are buffing your clues. Implant jars and creatures that drop clues have a 1 in 15 chance of dropping them instead of whatever the previous chance was. Clue geodes, nests and bottles are found 10 times more often, and just as a reminder, those will all be stackable this leagues. All clues just go as a stackable box in your inventory, you can open clues as much as you want, and if you get a step you don't like, you can drop it, open a new one, and it keeps the amount of steps you have. All clues will have the lowest number of steps to be able to complete it, and every clue will roll the maximum amount of rewards. So you'll always get the most out of every single clue that you pick up. Not even every single casket, but every single clue scroll will go the distance for you. To boot, Emote, Fallow and Charlie clue steps no longer have item requirements. That's very cool. No item requirements anywhere, it just saves you a job. You don't have to worry about filling up those stash units everywhere. You can just go and turn up in whatever you were wearing anyway and you're all good. Especially pairs nicely with the clue compass, so if you are picking that for your tier 3 teleport relic, Treasure Arbiter could be one to look at because you could whip around and complete clues so fast and you'll have them dropping in massive numbers. One thing to note though, they did say in the stream today that there are less clue related tasks on the global task list than there have been in previous leagues, so don't expect to be farming massive amounts of tasks and points just from clues. However, this is still a very powerful effect. The extra loot from caskets is def definitely nice and being able to guarantee the completions at the lowest amount. You'll just be getting so many clue rewards, you'll fill up those collection slots and have access to pretty much any clue item you want other than maybe third age. Your second choice though is Production Master. And as someone who had Production Prodigy last year, I know the power of this one firsthand. This one is going to make you go faster. Everything you do is instant. Anything that was an AFK activity before, instant now. Smelting ores, smithing bars, into items, or making cannonballs. 
fletching logs, stringing bows, making arrow shafts, making headless arrows, regular arrows, so basically all fletching, cleaning herbs and making potions, making unfinished potions as well, cooking food, making pies, pizzas, jugs of wine, crafting leather, uncut gems, glass blowing jewellery, pottery, battle staffs, and spinning flax or wool. What this means is, you stand at a bank, you click withdraw, uncut sapphire, you click chisel, click uncut sapphire, click space, or the make all button, and it all makes in a single tick. All 27 sapphires, all cut at the same time, massive crafting XP drop, you go into your bank, you deposit them all, and you start again and you level up so 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 quickly if you have a good way to make money like the thieving one at tier 2 or you have golden god then you can buy every skill with this and power them out in no time at all because it's all instant just be prepared to not have many periods where you're afk you'll be gathering afk and then zooming through the resources before you've even realized you've done Time save dot relic is production master. And then to finish off the fifth here, we have Slayer Master. You are always on task for any monster. You don't have to get a task anymore. There's no point in getting a task or skipping a task or blocking a task. You're always on task for all monsters. You can go kill 20 rats and then you can go kill Jad. And then you can go kill three Leviathan and you'll get Slayer XP for all of them without having to go to a Slayer Master or anything like that. You're just always on Slayer Task for all monsters. And that does mean that you can get keys in the wilderness, Laren's keys, or Konar brimstone keys if you're in an area where you would be able to get brimstone keys from the monster. What's more, you will unlock all perks for free from the Slayer Reward Store. You get a room pouch, a herb sack, and a looting bag. You can reclaim from the store at any time for free. Skip and block tasks for free doesn't really mean anything because you're always on every task. And you also gain a thousand bonus Slayer XP for the first time you kill the hundredth of each unique Slayer monster, scaled by the monster's Slayer level requirement. So if you kill a hundred things, you get a big bonus XP. And that's before multipliers. Yeah, you can make Slayer better. You can make AFK in quick and painless and done. Or you can buff your clues. Tier six. Just two to choose between in this one. We have Total Recall and Banker's Note. Total of Recall gives players access to the Crystal of Echoes, which can store any coordinate. Basically, wherever you are stood, it saves that point. It saves the amount of hit points per air and special attack energy you had at that point, and when you click it again, you go back there. That's it. That's all it does. Simple enough. You can store it right before Zolra. Go in, kill Zolra. Teleport back to the start, you've got full health spec and prayer again. You would need to use any potions again or top up if if necessary to maintain your boosts, but everything else you had is stored. And you can teleport back there as many times as you like until you store a new coordinate. You can only store one at a time, but you keep it there for as long as you like until you need to store a new one. Very cool, very useful effect could cut down bank time considerably because wherever you're doing an activity you can just teleport back there it doesn't work inside instances but aside from that you're good to go you can total recall and you can always just total recall to the entrance of an instance as long as it's not one that's going to charge you to enter or something like that banker's note on the other hand gives players the ability to note and unnote items at their will by using the banker's note item from their inventory. You can take a stack of items, a stack of uncut sapphires to run with the earlier example, take that stack into a raid with you, unnote it during downtime when your buddy's prepping because he died, cut a bunch of sapphires, you're waiting for a boss's rotation or waiting for it to charge up, you know, the start of Ice Demon when the, the things are melting, Cut an inventor sapphires. Oh shit, now he's hitting me, he's taking too much damage. Don't worry, we've got a thousand sharks here. We'll just unnote some of those and eat them. Infinite supplies. Well, you have to get the supplies, but you can carry as much as you want with this. Up to 28 different things, or 27, I guess. 
26, you need one to unlock the Minter. You can carry up to 26 different things in infinite supply with Banker's Note. And there's so much just different things that you can do with this, like cutting sapphires in a raid, or just doing it while you're running around doing quests. Doing anything that would usually require you to stand at a bank no longer does. You can do it during your other activities, which gives this a lot of power, a lot of utility and versatility, and it does have those edge case PVM situations if you feel like you're going to need to bring some extra food or prayer potions in or whatever. It's going to be a tough call, this one. I think personally I'm looking towards Banker's Note, but I'm not 100% set yet. I didn't get to play with it last leagues, though I took Fire Sale instead of Banker's Note. I'm proud of it. So this time I am kind of more tempted by it as I did play with Last Recall last time around. The penultimate tier next, we have tier 7. This one was somewhat known until today. We had just the one new addition in Pocket Kingdom here, added to Grimoire and Overgrown. Overgrown I did mention earlier, so I'll start there. You get the Leprechaun's Vault, which allows access to the Seed Vault from anywhere in the world. It is an item you carry with you. And you will also gain the following benefits to farming. Crops never die. Seeds have a 75% chance to not be consumed. When a seed fully grows, if you have another seed in the vault, then it will automatically harvest the patch for you straight to your bank and replant the seed. Automatically replanted seeds have ultra compost added whether or not you have any available. Fantastic, it's just auto farming. It does only work while you're online, so you can't log out and still gain the benefits of this, but as long as you take an action once every 25 minutes, your overgrown is going to be ticking away in the background, getting you farming resources. Coupled with the fact that farming is five times quicker, like the farming tick cycles are five times quicker during leagues, you're going to be getting constant resources from this. This is why I said it didn't pair necessarily well with the friendly forager from earlier on, because they're kind of giving you the same thing. Oh, I'm going to be able to get lots of herbs while I'm doing the rest of the game. Definitely a very powerful effect. I know a lot of people are looking at this one. Grimoire, on the other hand, is the other one that we knew about before. The Arcane Grimoire, an item that allows you to swap freely between all spell books, regardless of the area, quest, diary requirements. You have all spell books and all prayers. You don't need Desert for Ancients, you don't need Zaya for Rigor, you can get those no matter where you are by taking Grimoire. Definitely an extremely powerful effect, especially for those who are thinking they're going to be focused more on combat, as there is a lot more to offer on combat here than anything else, because of the prayers mainly being a combat influence in the game, and the spell books mainly being used for Ancients, though you do get access to Arceus as well, and Lunas without Fremenic. Argan Grimoire is a really good choice. It's probably what I'm going to pick, but I wouldn't blame you for being tempted by Pocket Kingdom either. And this is another one that clashes slightly with the earlier herbs, or it could clash a little with, like, the woodcutting perk as well, depending on what you're using this for. But this is going to allow you to get access to miscellaneous from anywhere. You don't need Fremenic as a region. You can you get a little item in the Pocket Kingdom, which you can interact with to access it. Not only that, workers will work for 50% less money, always have max appeal, produce twice as many resources, and accrue resources every hour instead of every day. This means you are going to be getting 24 times as much as you would usually out of miscellaneous times by two because it's also twice as many resources and it's costing you half as much although it is costing you half as much as 24 days not as half as much of a single day because it's going to be taking that money away faster as well so you're definitely going to need a lot of gold to power this but you can pump out as much coal fish herbs seeds even some gems planks or wood for the planks at least all accessible through the pocket kingdom i think you can even get flax in miscellaneous here if you really needed some of that you could just shove it on for an hour and stock up some flax why the hell not tons to offer here and it's definitely tempting less tempting if you go in fremenic which i think a lot of people are this year so 
they're, they're going to have less of an incentive to go towards this pocket kingdom. But if you're not Fremenic, then it's definitely something you should at least consider because miscellany is a really powerful thing to have access to on an Iron Man account, especially. And the final tier, tier 8, the combat tier. We have Last Stand, Guardian, and the Specialist. Last Stand is basically going to give you a Super Mario star. You're invulnerable for 16 ticks with a tick being 0.6 seconds, so I think it's about 12 seconds. You cannot be reduced to zero HP during this time, and it triggers when you would be reduced to zero, by the way. You're instead reduced to one, can't go below one. Your combat stats get boosted to 255, but rapidly drain back down to your base level plus 15, so it does give you the effects of a super buff on those stats, which is nice, even when it's finished. And when the effect ends, all incoming damage that you would have taken is nullified and you healed based on the amount of damage that you dealt while you had those boost stats over the last 16 ticks. Once the ability is used, it does have a cooldown, 3 minutes have to pass or you have to die before you can use last stand again. But this is an insanely powerful get out of jail free card. You can face tank anything you want and just keep hitting it with even higher DPS than you could possibly imagine thanks to those massive boosts. Definitely one to watch and if you want an extra insurance policy in PVM, you can't go wrong with last stand. Guardian, on the other hand, is going to give an undeniably powerful amount of DPS. That's what this thing does more than anything. You get a summonable thrall. It lasts 30 minutes, but you can resummon it whenever you need to. It attacks with whatever style the enemy's weak to, and it hits every 4 ticks with a min hit of 5 and a max hit of 13. If you're in multi-combat, it will hit multi-targets, like a chin or a barrage spell. So it can help you do your slater tasks against dust devils or jellies or whatever. It even works inside the gauntlet. You can bring it in with you, but it doesn't work in PvP. And yeah, it's just going to give you extra DPS wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Any type of combat, have the Guardian with you and you get bonus DPS. And it's good. It's a strong amount. Definitely, if you're not excited by either of the other two, then Guardian is a solid, solid choice because... It's just going to make you more effective. Specialist, on the other hand, is going to require a bit of special attention. You're going to need to at least know what weapons you want to use in this one. But you gain the following benefits to special attacks. All of them cost 20%, regardless of what their initial cost is. If it usually takes 50% of your spec bar or 100%, does not matter. They all take just 20 and they have 100% increased accuracy. What's more, if you do miss that accuracy check, you get 10% refunded, half of the cost, ready to go again with just one cycle of recharge. Whenever you kill an NPC as well, you restore 15% of your special attack energy, so you're going to be restoring it just as fast as you are spending it. In certain scenarios, I imagine this is basically just going to give you infinite spec. And if your spec hits multiple times, you have multiple chances to get a 10% refund. For example, a Dragon Claws, it costs 20%, but if all four specs of the Dragon Claws miss, you get back 40. So you just gain 30 just for missing with your Dragon Claws. So then you can go again. And again, you just got two Dragon Claws for the price of one. You just had to wait for the first one to miss. This is nuts, obviously. There's some really cool things that you'll be able to do with this through the league. The Dog Sword is jumping out as the weapon of choice from Asgarnia's Echo Boss Cerberus. The Dog Sword has the effects of all God Swords, which have incredibly powerful specs that usually take half of your spec bar. Being able to get five of these off in a row before you even start to factor in the special attack energy recharge that comes from misses and killing NPCs, you're just not going to be able to be stopped. You're just going to be woofing on everyone. So yeah, specialist is for those who want to go absolutely crazy. Guardians for people who just want some consistent extra DPS. And last stand is a great insurance policy that can also allow you to go crazy, but you've got to be a little careful with it because you don't want to put yourself in a dangerous position at the end of those 16 ticks. You'll get a big heal, but then you can take damage again. And that is basically all there is to it. For those who are curious, I'll go over my own picks, I guess. I will be going for Animal Wrangler in Tier 1. This is the wrong icon in their video. They've got these mixed up, but oh well. 
I'll be going for Animal Wrangler, which is this this icon, to get that fishing and hunter buffs. Then I'm thinking of moving into Friendly Forager. I may pick dodgy deals up from Reloaded at a later date, but I think Golden God is edging it out for me at the minute. Here I'm going to be getting Clue Compass. Golden God, like I say, is currently in the lead for me, but I may be tempted to reload on the dodgy deals. Here I'm a bit torn between Production Master and Treasure Arbiter, but I do love doing Clue Scrolls, and with the Clue Compass already, I feel like this one is just going to be the right choice for me, because of how much I do just enjoy doing clues, especially when you know they're always going to be in good regions for you, and you don't have to worry about the items now either, that just, yeah, it's going to be great. So I'm probably going to go for this one. In tier 6, I am going to take Banker's Note, I think. I didn't get to play with it last time around, and I definitely want to try it out, because it's a unique experience. Total Recall, very powerful effect but a lot of the high level content I'm going to be doing is in instances because of all the Echo bosses being instanced, Chambers of Zeric being instanced, Corrupted Gauntlet being instanced. There's not many places for me personally to get good use out of it. Colosseum 2 is instanced, Inferno instanced. So Banker's Note is just going to give me more value in those scenarios which is why I'm leaning towards it. For tier 7, I'm probably going to take Grimoire. Just having access to Ancients without having Desert, getting Piety as well without Candoring, because I'm mainly going a melee build, that's going to be really powerful for me. So I I can't see myself erring away from it. I was Fremenic last year, so I got good use out of my Miscellanea, and I know how powerful that is, but Grimoire just offers so much else, and with the herbs I'm getting from Friendly Forager earlier on, I'm not too worried about that. Pocket Kingdom would mainly be used for herbs if I had it, so I think I'm going to take Grimoire there, and then for my final tier, it's going to have to be Last Stand. It's going to have to be Last Stand. I've never done an Inferno successfully, I've never completed the Colosseum, and Last Stand is going to help me get there this leagues. What about you? Let me know in the comments what your path is that you're currently thinking of going. Hopefully the video's been handy for y'all, and helps you figure out what relics you're going to pick. I can't wait for leagues. I'm going to have a day one route coming. I'll be recording it as soon as I've finished editing this and released it. I'll be recording my day one route. It's already planned out. It's going to get you your first two relics unlocked, tier one and tier two, as well as your first combat mastery point and your first region unlock. So keep an eye out for that and hit subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss it. That's going to be all for me on this one. Until the next time, look after yourselves, be lovely to one another, and I'll see you on the next one.